He's an eternal God. He's a loving God. He's just God. He's feeling and a living God. But I love him most because he's my God and he cares for me. You're listening to the Nightly Spirit and Truth with Apostle Howard Langford from Spirit and Truth Worship Center. And we're having our services at 8655 Greenwich Road in the city of Virginia Beach. And you're welcome to join us there live on Sunday this Sunday morning at 8 a.m. At 8 a.m., we begin with an hour of consecrated prayer for Jesus asked his disciples, could you not pray with me for just one hour? And we simply believe that if you're going to spend time ministering the word of God and we, that we should spend that uh, equal amount of time reverencing his, his presence in the place. One thing that we acknowledge is that the Holy Spirit is the, is the Spirit of the Lord as well. And we recognize uh, the person of the Holy Spirit just as well as we recognize the Father and the Son. And in his presence is a fullness of joy. So we tend to honor the presence of the Lord when we enter into the atmosphere where his name dwells. Let's pray. Father, we come to you tonight thanking you for your loving, your grace, your tender mercy, Father, for it is simply because of your grace that we are not consumed by your fire. So we are praying now, binding the devil on every hand and side, and we thank you, Lord, for giving us this time and opportunity to reverence your presence right now. At this moment, we take off everything that has been placed on us through the day, we put on us, O oh Father, the, the armor of the Lord, that we may be entire and that we may win the battles that you've destined us to win. Right now, we understand that we don't have time to waste, Lord, because your time is at hand. So we are yielding ourselves to you, our thought life, our mind, our, our will, and our intellect. We are yielding it all to you in this hour, Father, that you may get the glory from our life. Right now, we are praying for this Hampton Roads region. Father, we are crying out to you. And we are asking right now, Father, that you will stretch forth your mighty hand, O oh God, and heal the land, Father, for you said in your word, if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, if we seek your faith and turn from our wicked ways, then you will hear us from heaven. You will forgive us of our sins and you would heal the land. So right now we are praying, God, that we can hear you from heaven, Father. And we're asking you right now, God, to heal this land. In the name of Jesus, we're praying now. Amen. And amen. Well, tonight we are going to um, continue in the vein, or we're going to start a brand new series on destroying the spirit of delay. So many of us have been seemingly in the same place, third generation poverty, fourth generation um, not walking out the promise of the Lord. And we have witnessed people in our past who have um, se seemingly just been stuck in a place. And and you, you walk by corners and the same people that were on the corners 20 years ago are still on the corners. You know, your third generation on on welfare and and you have babies out of wedlock and your family is married and those who are married, their, their, their marriage is in shambles and, and they go to church and they call on the name of the Lord. And there are times even when, when it seems that this walk of holiness is impossible, but the Lord says that holiness is, the, well, he didn't say this, but this is, this is my translation, that holiness is the currency in heaven that God um, brings an exchange on earth. In other words, when you when you walk in holiness and you believe the Lord for his will to be done in your life, that, that is a life that God can bless. The Bible says to let us know that he will stand by his word to perform it. And what does that mean? That when you speak the word of God, he will stand by his word to perform it. And, and he stands by you in, when, when you have a lifestyle that, that he can honor. And that honors him, you know. So many times when we're walking in the spirit of delay, we don't recognize that there are areas and pockets in our life where we hold on to things of the world. But but when we yield our entire life to him, some of the things that we're watching on television, sometimes when we're in our private chat rooms or or we have 
ex-girlfriends and people in our lives that we're um, um, instant messaging and DM and, and, and putting them all, you know, in our spaces that the Lord wants to occupy. The Bible says that, that, that in my father's house are many mansions. And, and that simply means that there are so many rooms in the father's house. And, and many times when we were reading the word of God and when we were taught the word of God, we were only taught the stories and the fables, it seems as if they were just good stories. But but now that we're getting older and mature and the Lord, we're understanding that, that we're not talking about the great by and by, but this body that we're living is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And in the father's house, there are many rooms and so many rooms in our life that, that we have to allow the Lord to occupy every space in our life. We've got to allow the Lord to occupy every area of our life. And when we do that, then that is the place where the Lord's name can dwell. And that is an area where God can, can begin to use your life and he can get glory from your life. So many times we go through many tragic um, situations in our life and, and and we wonder, well, Lord, why me? Why am I going through this? And why is it that they seem to be blessed? And and, and that's another story that I'll, I'll make sure that I tap on. Um, why is it that they seem to be blessed and my life is in shambles? Well, first of all, you have to recognize what is the definition of blessed? What does the Lord mean? When, when he says that we are blessed. Think about that for a minute. What does it mean when the Lord says we are blessed? Well, the Bible says in, in the Beatitudes, and that is found in Matthew chapter 5, verses 3 through 12. It says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for, for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when men shall insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven for the same way that the prophets were pers persecuted, so will you be persecuted. Well, some of the time then we, when we thought that we were, you know, when we look at some people who are being blessed, sometimes people are just walking with the devil. And we look at that from our from our our, our Western um, um, mentality, and we think, well, they've got the nice cars and the nice homes, and 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 they must be blessed. And then you look at someone who's who's a prayer warrior, and they don't have two nickels to rub together, but they have an inheritance of faith, and they found favor in God. And we don't consider them blessed. Well, the Bible says that when you when you when you hunger and thirst. For the righteousness of God being made available in your life, then you're blessed. We're still talking about destroying the spirit of delay, but I have to first remove the cobwebs in your head that that keep the the uh, things entangled in your mind that let you hold on to um, <clears throat> things that keep you in a in a certain state. And I've got to tackle that first. You know, the Bible says to, to let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, he didn't think it robbery to be equal with God. You have to change the image of how you see yourself. If you want the blessing of the Lord in your life, if you want the hand of the Lord in your life, you've got to see yourself as he sees you. And when you see yourself the way that the Lord sees you, then, then you don't accept everything that comes your way. Now I was, you know, I, I was I was praying the other day about a, two, two weeks ago, maybe about a week ago, and I was praying against the spirit of delay, and it seemed as if the spirit of delay just continued to to follow me, and and then it wanted to follow my children, and I watched, and I just took a step back and I looked at 
I, I looked at different areas in my lineage, in my family, on both sides, mom and dad, and I recognized that these were two people that are so great. And they have greatness just um, protruding from their pores. There's just greatness all over the place. And then I'm going to look at areas where I know that the Lord wanted to use them even greater. And, 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 and no matter what I could do or say or pray, these are decisions that, 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 that we make um, that, that cause us not to walk in the fullness of the Lord. And then I looked at my own life and I recognized there are so many areas in my life that, that I'm not walking in the fullness of, in the greatness of God. I'm not walking um, in, in all that God has called me to do. In other words, what the Lord says is, I will do above and beyond what you can ask or think. So if I could ask or think greatness or greater uh, positions of influence, and the Lord said, I will do above and beyond that. In other words, I've got ways that I can that I have made and I've set aside that you can't even, you can't even think about that will that will place you in the positions of of greatness. Now I'll, I'll share this with you before before we close out for the night. I'll share this with you. There are so many areas of our life that the Lord is protecting us from. Because he knows when we get to those different places and platforms that there are opportunities to compromise. So the Lord loves us so much that he will keep us from some of those areas of influence because he knows that when we get to those areas of influence, that there's a lady or a man and someone that will that, that will pull you away from the presence. And they have got the right bodies, body style. They've got the right cologne, right perfume. They've got the right um, uh, skin texture. They've got the they've got the right eyes and the right right eyes and all of that and, and, and smile. And and if you're and if you have openings in your life, if those are areas of your life that you've not yielded to the Lord, then you can fall. I'm so thankful that there are times when I thought that I was ready for 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 the next level of platform that God didn't promote me at that point. Because he knew what was in my life, you know. There, you know, um, many times over the course of our, our marriage, we've been married for my wife and I've been married for thirty, uh, going on thirty-two years next month, and and marriage was 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 difficult at times, at best. And and I know that there were pockets in my life that I had not totally yielded to the Lord. Now, thank the Lord that that He didn't promote me at those times to greater levels of greater levels of of influence. Because I look back now, 20, 25 years ago, I was not ready for that. Yes, I was anointed and yes, I was believing the Lord, but I came from an environment where where sexual um impurity was 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 for lack of better words, it was just um it was in I was inundated in that atmosphere. And the Lord needed to get some things out of me to make sure that I'm ready for this day. Hey, listen, join us on tomorrow night for the Nightly Spirit and Truth uh, with Apostle Howard Lake. I'm going to really dive into the scriptures with overcoming the spirit of delay. So if you have areas of your life that you know that God has called you to greater, you might want to tune in tonight and then on next week. This is Apostle Howard Lankford from Spirit and Truth Worship Center. Join us again on tomorrow night. Join us also on our on our website at www dot one spirit in truth dot org or go to our cash app at minute um dollar sign spirit and truth mc god bless good night
Praise the Lord, the Lord that we serve an awesome God. He's a mighty God, an everlasting God. He's an eternal God, a loving God, a just God, a feeling and a living God. But I love him most because he's my God and he cares for me. You're listening to the Nightly Spirit and Truth with Apostle Howard Langford from Spirit and Truth Worship Center. And we're having our services on this Sunday. This Sunday is the last Sunday of the month and we're having our live in-person service at 5655 Greenwich Road in the city of Virginia Beach, Virginia. And uh, we are looking forward to seeing you there. You've been listening to our broadcast for the last number of years. And and now you can meet us in person. So many of you have been asking, well, where are you meeting? What time are you meeting? And and I'm going to tell you something. To meet us at 8 o'clock in the morning is a stretch for some of you. I promise you it is is a stretch. And, 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 And I am very cautious of people's time because one thing I understand about time when I was in business is that People say time is money. Well, no, time is not money. Time is not refundable. You don't get time back. Even when the Bible says I will restore the years of the canker worm, the palmer worm, and the caterpillar have eaten, the Lord may not give you the time back from when you were young, but what he does is he places you right back in line. And all of those years um, where, where you would have received things in life, he's placing you in the space where you should have been. So God is the redeemer of time. And so, you know, I, so I say that to say this, I'm very protective of the time that I spend in the Lord. And I'm very protective of the people who come and share the time with us, those spaces. And so we don't, we don't waste time at eight o'clock in the morning. We begin with prayer and we pray until nine o'clock in the morning. And, and then we go right into worship for a few. And then we go right into the word. And so not that um, we're telling you what time we're going to be getting out, but we just go right into and we cut out all of the fluff that you would norm- that you could normally see. And if you want to know more details about our ministry, you can, can go to www.onespiritintruth.org. And we look forward to, um, to, to uh, seeing you there at 8 o'clock in the morning. Well, again, we're going over the spirit of delay, destroying the spirit of delay. So many of us have had uh, pockets of delay in our life and and you you've been trying to go to school and and you're trying to graduate or you're trying to get this degree or promotion and you're overlooked for promotion you're overlooked for this for opportunities to grow you've been stagnant in in ministry and and and, and no matter what you do you fast you pray you believe you know you can't find out why your ministry is not growing why your life is not growing while you're in this state of retardation. And retardation simply means that, that it, there is no growth. When, when you could or you should be in a certain place, you're not. And so that spirit of retardation is over your life, over your ministry, over your business. Well, tonight we're going to break the spirit of stagnation over your life in the name of Jesus, through and by the word of God. You know, um, And so let's pray. Father, we come to you right now thanking you for your love and your grace, your tender mercies, your weight, your essence, your kabod, your glory, Father. We are praying now, God, that your power will fall when your name is called. Choose the doubters wrong, Father. Lord, you're mighty and you're strong. Father, right now, help our unbelief, Father. Fight this battle for me because we simply believe that this is the place where your name dwells. And we're praying now that as you stretch forth your mighty hand, you will anoint us for this hour in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, I came across a book um, about two weeks ago and I just had to purchase it. It was by Ola Watson Uglin. And he wrote a book called Illuminating the Spirit of Stagnation, Stagnation in Your Life. It's a prayer journal. And it really just goes through the different prayers um, that we need to pray. So you're welcome to go on Amazon and download this book. It's, it's very uh, minimal cost. And so I'm just giving him the credit because he did the research and I've got to give him the credit. And um, you can also uh, find him on his email and just, you know, and the name is the same. But his name is Ogil- his name is Oluwantazin Ogaden. And I promise you, man, this is a read that, that's going to bless your life. As a matter of fact, the moment I began reading it, um, 
I got a call or, or, or a text and, and there was immediate promotion in my life in certain areas of my life. And I'm so thankful for God, for those who take the time to do the time to, 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 to do the research and to journal um, their process. So, um, but one of the things we talked about on last night with, in overcoming the spirit of delay that there, the Bible says, in my father's house are many mansions. There are many rooms in our, well, the body, the body that we live in is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And, and when we recognize that the body that we live in is the temple of the Holy Spirit, then we are more cognizant and aware of the thing that we do, the thoughts that we have, the places that we go, the things that we imagine, the, the revenge, the hatred, and the hatred that, that, we, that we tend to walk in. We're more aware of that. So, you know, one thing the Lord, the Holy Spirit woke me up in the morning, early in the morning, and he said, you know what? The Holy Spirit is a person. People reverence my house. People reverence my leadership. People reverence my shepherds. People reverence my name. People reverence my son, but they tend to ignore the Holy Spirit. He said, but that is key and that's crucial. That was the whole entire reason why Jesus died, in part. He said, it, it, it is imperative that I leave because if I don't leave, the Holy Spirit cannot come. And when he comes, he will lead you into all truths. The Holy Spirit is placed in your life to lead you to truth. And when you ignore the Holy Spirit, the Bible says to grieve not the Holy Spirit. In many of our churches, the Holy Spirit is grieved. In many of our homes, the Holy Spirit is grieved. In many of the places that we live in, you know, while, while we're running around church on Sunday, we've got our boyfriend and our girlfriends in our beds that same night. While you've got a wife at home, you've got a girlfriend at work. While, while, you're, while, while you're having relationship with your wife, you're thinking about someone else. The old songwriter said that your body is here with me, but your mind is on the other side of town. Well, we're living in an adulterous relationship, even in our mind. And the Lord is jealous. He wants us to love only him. I tell people this. I love my wife dearly, but I fear God more than anything. And that means this, that, that I, as much as I love my wife, if I don't fear God, I can love my wife and commit sin against my wife. But when I recognize that the Holy Spirit is everywhere, then it keeps me in line with actions that I might could take if 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 i if i um did not acknowledge god's presence so you know one thing i want you to understand is this is that the whole, the, the, the 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 god that we serve he's a very jealous god he's jealous he's jealous and he wants us to want only him well some of the things that i was reading on in this book um, overcoming the spirit of delay was that and I get I'll, I'll give I'll give um I give the the acknowledgement to the, to the writer, but he said the spirit of stagnation is a force of retardation that makes the past of a person to be better than the present. In other words, we're continuing to live in our past. I was telling you know in our Bible study on on a couple of weeks ago, I was saying that I'd rather be a never was than a has been. In other words, you know, now both things are wrong, but a has been is, is so much worse. You know, when when you used to walk with the Lord and God and God was walking in your life and he was moving in your life, and now you um you you are now so far away from the presence of God that people only remember your where you were and not where and 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 or they remember what you did when you walk close with the Lord. 
and they don't remember now some of the some of the former things that you that you did before you you fell. I don't want to fall. I want to end well. You know, I was reading Second Kings chapter um, chapter eighteen, and I was reading about about them about about the children of Israel and, and Judah and and how the fall came and and no matter what great leaders and what bad leaders they had they there was still just this 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 disdain this disdain for walking out the promises and the plan of God for our lives this is where the church is in so many different areas you know where we have this semblance of what God does and who God is and we're not walking this thing out. In other words, we're living on the past genera- the past generations that walk in holiness, and we're living off of their reputations. Well, I'm going to tell you how dangerous that is. There was a time when Saul, when, when Samson, who was great, strong, and mighty, the mightiest, greatest, strongest man that ever lived, where he lived on the history of what he had done. And the whole time, and I'm going to tell you something that's very key. I need you to understand this. The enemy is looking at your life and he's taking note of your life. And you're wondering why you're in a place of stagnation. God is protecting you from yourself. Well, Solomon, uh, I'm sorry, Samson was known to be great and strong and the Philistines feared him. But he sinned against God when he fell in love with the, with the with uh, Delilah. That old Philistine woman who was beautiful. I mean, she had to have been beautiful. To make you forget God, she had to have been beautiful. Well, the devil's got a trap for all of you, and it and it comes in the areas that you lust after secretly in your in your heart. That's why the Bible says, um, to keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it flows the issues of life. And Samson lived on the memories of what he could do. So that while he's wallowing in sin, he's floundering in his faith. And when he woke up one morning and his hair had been cut off of his head, he shook himself like he used to do. And he was destroyed. And he had to live with that shame until his hair grew back. But by that time, his reputation was tarnished. His eyes had been plucked out. And there was a mockery against God. What you don't want to do is make a mockery against the Lord. You want to allow your life to be a place that God's name dwells. Well, you're listening to Apostle Howard Langford with Spirit and Truth Worship Center. Go to our website and check us out on onespiritandtruth.org. That's www.onespiritandtruth.org. And continue to listen to the announcements because we're going to continue in this message on next week, but I want you to be blessed. God bless. Have a wonderful night. Praise the Lord, the Lord that we serve with an awesome God. He's a mighty God, an everlasting God. 
He's an eternal God. He's a loving God. He's just got a feeling and a living God, but I love him most because he's my God and he cares for me. This is Apostle Howard Langford from Spirit and Truth Worship Center. And we are so excited to have you join us again on tonight. Let's pray. Father, we come to you in the mighty name of Jesus, thanking you, Lord, for your love. Who can stand against the Lord? No one can. And no one will. Why? Because victory belongs to Jesus. And we're praying right now, God, that you will show us how to have victory in you on tonight. Father, we are tired. We're tired of, of, of watching gun violence in the streets. We're tired. We're tired of media manipulation and we're tired of, 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 of bully pulpits, Father. And we're tired of, of stagnation. We're tired of being in the same exact place again and again. And we're asking you now, not for strength to endure one more day, God, but we're asking you for access into the next space that you're calling us to walk in, Father. Help us to shed off those things of our life that are keeping us in stagnation. Father, help us to lay aside every weight and every sin that does so easily beset us, Father, that we may run with patience. Tonight we press for the mark of the prize, which is the high calling. We're pressing for the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And we're praying now, God, show us your glory, Father. Show us your glory on tonight in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, again, we're this is Monday night and we're talking to you tonight, destroying the spirit of delay. And this is the Apostle Howard Langford. I'm show I, I'm, I'm sharing with you. Because it's so important that we that 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 the body of Christ knows who we are. The enemy has had us in this place of delay for a very long time. And the last two years was almost the the um the crescendo of a of a of, of a of a plan that has been placed to keep the church in a place of retardation. What we saw two years ago when when um, when COVID uh, first began, we saw the simulant of what a church should be standing in the presence of all that the devil is. And it caused those who have been going to church and walking in the Lord um, pause to be concerned. Concerned about our life, concerned about our future, concerned about our children, concerned about the state of our country, the state of our government, the state of our economy, the state of our welfare, our retirement. It caused us to be concerned whether we would even live tomorrow. There was such a heavy inundation of fear, always um, coming from our television and our radios and, and the conversations of people around us who who knew the Lord who, who only talked about the fear of going outside, the fear of gathering, the fear of, it was just so much fear. Well, the media has done a wonderful job perpetuating the spirit of fear. That's what they do. But the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run in and we are safe. The Bible says that he who dwells, you're going to hear me say this often and constant. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadows of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord. See, you can't say of the Lord unless you're dwelling. That place is not for visitors, but it is for those who dwell. If you've been in a place of stagnation, which I feel is as large as the, the, the nation of stagnation is as large as the nation of procrastination. They're both very large places that many of us have found ourselves in or we're in right now. Let me help you walk out of that area of stagnation. And I'm reading, I'm reading portions of a book by, by Oluwantazin Ogden. And that book is Eliminating Stagnation in Your Life. And and last on Friday we were talking about the spirit of uh, the spirit of retardation 
And the spirit of the force of retardation is it, it creates stagnancy in our life. It's wasted effort and delay in the accomplishments of our of our of life's assignment. In other words, we're running on a treadmill on a hamster wheel, and we're we're in emitting a lot of energy just to remain in the same spot. Because you know that if you stop moving, then you're going to backslide. You're going to fall backwards. And and so that fear keeps you chasing a carrot. I read a book a couple of, um, uh, maybe last year, carrots and sticks don't work. In other words, we were brought up in a time in my generation, in my lifetime, there was always a carrot that was led out in front of you. Kind of how, like, they used to lead mules because a mule is a very stubborn animal. So they would put a carrot in front of it while they ride on the back. And the mule is constantly chasing the carrot, but the carrot is on a stick that's waving in front of him. And he'll never catch the carrot. But he continues to walk because he loves the carrot. Well, there are so many carrots that are placed over our life and in front of us. And, and, and we'll never catch that carrot. Well, let me say this to you. The promises of the Lord are yes and they are amen. And the promises that the Lord is is, is placing before us, it is something that he wants us to obtain. And you can only obtain that by giving your life to him. Totally. Body, mind, soul, spirit, everything has to belong to him. So what we saw, again, uh, two years ago, we saw a real devil come up against the facade of a church. Altars were full before before COVID. Altars were full of people uh, running to the Lord and running um, to to his presence and, and laying down and weeping and getting up with some of the same hatred and vitriol that we had before we got to the altar. And we never allowed the Lord to deal with us. And so we always, so we would walk away and then we would go and back to our phones and check our DMs where we have our, our, our secret accounts where we have secret pictures of women in our Instagram and secret pictures of men in our Instagram and certain conversations that we were privy to that we know the Lord is not happy and pleased with, but yet we continue to do it because we did not reverence the Holy Spirit as a person. And we thought, well, a pastor can't see this, or or my wife or my husband can't see this. And and so we continue to do those things that dishonor God. I'm going to tell you something. What we saw in 2020 was just a rehearsal for what the enemy has for the world. It's just a rehearsal. I promise you it's just a rehearsal. And if you thought 2020 and 2021 was, was, was scary, I promise you, if you don't find yourself in the face of the Lord and to turn everything over to him. 2021 was just a rehearsal with the things that are coming down the pike. You know, uh, last year, the beginning of the year, I, I always lay before the Lord in November. And so in December, God gives me the revelation for, for the following year. And the Lord said, he showed me a vision of, of, of the world. And then he had a question mark hanging over the vision. I said, okay, Lord, what does this mean? It was a question mark hanging over the world. And I said, well, what does this question mark mean? The Lord says this. He said this to me. He said, the world is weighing in the balance right now. And if the church does not step up and be who I've called it to be, this world is done. In other words, when I say the world is done, the Bible says heaven and earth shall pass away, but this word shall never um, pass away. But what he's saying is that I've left this world in the hand of the church. I'm not concerned about what the world does because the world is going to do what the world is going to do. But when we have we have this imbalance of of worldly ideas and worldly ideologies and worldly um, compromise in the church, then it causes the world and the balance of the world to be shifted in the sense where 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 anything goes. And in so many of our seeker-friendly churches, in other words, what does that mean? Seeker-friendly means that we're willing to do anything and everything just to make sure that our, our buildings are swelled. But holiness is the currency for getting the will of God done. 
The Lord said, I would that you be holy, even as I am holy. Holy I am, for holy you be. Be ye holy, for I am holy. Now, does that mean that that we, we're not going to get everything right? I'm going to promise you that we're not going to get everything right. David didn't get everything right, and the Lord said that this is the man after my own heart. Well, I've grown to understand that being after the Lord's heart means that even when I do wrong, I'm going to chase after your heart, God. I don't want to, I don't want position without presence. See, see, Saul, who was the king before David, he had the position of king without the presence of the king. And so David had to go there almost nightly and just, just worship just to get the demons away from Saul. This is the type and shadow of where the church is. Many of our places that we are the church, we are the body of, we are, we are, we are the arms and the feet. The destiny of this world is locked up in us and it's locked up in somebody else that we know or we don't know. When we do the will of the Lord, we connect to the assignment that God has for us. And then the world changes. In other words, you know, um, the Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Now, Jesus had to be obedient to the will of God in order for all of us to have access to the kingdom. I'm still talking about de destroying the spirit of the labor. I've really got to, to dig down deep and not just throw some word over top of the ignorance that we walk in. And I want to make sure I dig a foundation for, for what we're about to plant. And we're going to walk through this thing. I'm just asking that you stay with us, walk with us, enjoy us on Sundays. On May 29th, we're going to be in Washington, D.C., uh, ministering there with uh, with Dr. Um, Dr. Renee Pearsall, Pastor Pearsall, a wonderful, wonderful woman of God. Um, go to our website if you want to join us, if you're in, if you're in the Washington, D.C. area. I'll be preaching the ten o'clock, ten a.m. service there, and it is the uh, the the uh, the precursor for their um, church anniversary, and so you know I'm, I'm looking forward to that. So we will. And so I said that to say that we're not going to be having worship service on May 29th in Virginia Beach. So we're going to be in Washington D.C. So you're welcome to join us there. But let's you know let let's join in prayer against the spirit of murder that's on our cities, that's on our country. You know, the Bible says that I'm going to hear the cries of my people. He promises to hear the cries of his people. There is no legislation that's going to cause the, the murders to stop. There is no um, bills that you can pass. You know, there is there is nothing that's going to cause the shift in the environment unless the body of Christ fall on our face and ask the Lord to forgive us of our sins that he may heal the land. Nothing's going to change. Until the church becomes the place and the people and the body who God has called us to be. Nothing will change. I speak as one who knows. You know, so let, let's, let's just go before the Lord. And let's ask the Lord to heal our land. He said, if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. Seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then you will hear from heaven. Forgive I will forgive you over sin that I will heal the land. Well, this has been Apostle Howard Lang for sharing with you for the nightly spirit and truth. Join us again tomorrow night as it is our heart's desire to turn your heart toward hope. Listen to the announcements so you can see how you can uh, continue to follow with this ministry. God bless. Stay tuned for the next announcement for tomorrow. Praise the Lord. The Lord will be served with an awesome God. He's a mighty God, an everlasting God. He's an eternal God. He's a loving God. He's just got a feeling and a living God, but we love him most because he's our God and he cares for us. This is the Apostle Howard Lake for sharing with you during the nightly spirit of truth. And I thank you for listening and joining us on tonight. Tonight, we're going to continue in the uh, vein of uh, destroying the spirit of delay. Destroying the spirit of stagnation in our life, the spirit of retardation in our ministry, in our finances, destroying the spirit that keeps our children locked up. Right now, we're breaking the hand of the enemy that's 
calling our children to be in stagnation. That's calling our children not to walk in purpose and power. We're calling for a, a mighty move of God to fall on the church, to fall on the believers, to fall on the house of God and the people of God. We're calling for a mighty move of God tonight because victory belongs to Jesus. And it is in him that we live. It is in him that we move. It is in him that we have our being. Again, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm reading passages from a book by Aunt Aluantazin Ogaden, and the book is Destroying, uh, Eliminating Stagnation in Your Life. And in reading this book, I found it is a prayer, it's more of a prayer journal that gives us the access to walking out the plan and power of God in our life. One thing we read is that the spirit of stagnation is a force of retardation that makes the past of a person to be better than the present. In other words, we're living in our past. This forces retardation to create stagnancy, and then we have a bunch of wasted effort in our life. In other words, we're living on a hamster wheel. We walk, many times we walk in the ignorance of our surrounding. You often heard me quote a book by Sun Tzu, The Art of War. And, and in one of the quotes that he said is this. To know yourself and not to know your enemy, you will lose every war you win. In other words, you know yourself, but you don't know your enemy. For every battle you have that, that seems like victory, you'll lose two. So two steps forward, one step back. And then it says to know your enemy and not to know yourself, you don't even need to go into war. There's no need, there's no need for you to even um, go into battle. But to know your enemy, if you don't, in other words, if you don't know your enemy and you don't know yourself, you won't even win a battle. Then it says if you know yourself and you know your enemy, when you gain ground, you will keep that ground and you will then begin to move forward in that ground. So tonight, we're going to spend this time getting to know yourself. In Proverbs chapter 13, verse 12, it says, hope deferred makes the heart sick. I'm looking at a generation of people whose heart has been sick now. And they've given up on hope. Dr. King once said that many people die when they're in their early 20s and then they're buried when they're in their late 70s. I'm seeing a generation of people who are dying, who are finally dying, and they're being buried, but they died many years ago. They died in their hopes and their dreams. They died in the promises that the Lord promised them. They died in the areas where the Lord wanted to give them, where the Lord wanted to give you um, a promise you held on to a lie. So what we consider generational curses are really generational lies. You know, Mama Nim said that and you believe Mama Nim and you didn't believe what the word of God says. It's time that we put our faith in the Lord's faith and yield our total bodies to the Lord and allow the presence of God and the power of God to be the only thing that we desire. It says hope deferred makes the heart sick. But when the desire cometh, it is a tree of life. One of the favorite tools of the devil is delay. I promise you, it is delay. Now, to say delay is his favorite tool, in other words, it's like we look at the we look at the patience of the Lord and we think that the devil is impatient. No, the devil is playing chess with your life. He will plant seeds in your life. He will plant seeds in your life and then wait for the harvest. You know, I, I read a story about um, about a, 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 a fly that that will lay larva in, in um, well, a caterpillar will lay larva on, well, the fly lays, the fly lays his larva on a, on a leaf and the caterpillar eats the leaf and he's full. But the larva is now ingested by the caterpillar and the caterpillar looks like he's healthy, but he's dying because the lava from the fly is growing inside the caterpillar. 
And on the outside, he's healthy, but on the inside, he's dying. That is the type and shadow of what the church is. And what we experienced over the last two years is that a church that looked healthy and seats were full. But it's almost like we were given pablum and, and words to make us feel good about being about being in a place of looking good. But when the devil came, there was no standard to raise against him. What we've read in the Bible is this. We read this. We read it like this. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. Well, let me tell you this. Let me give, when you read that scripture, that in the original translation, there was no commas. There was, there, there was no periods. There was just lines of words. But you have to measure the word of God against the nature of God. And the nature of God says, I want to raise up a standard against the enemy. And when I raise up a standard, I will come in like a flood. In other words, let me read it to you when the Lord shared it with me. When the enemy shall come, comma, in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. When you're hoping and trusting and believing for the Lord to do something in your family and then somebody gives you a negative report and tells you that that can't happen, that's the enemy coming. Now, you can wait for the enemy to continue to lay evidence and to and, and, and to come in like a flood. You can continue it, to, to allow the enemy to continue to give you all the news and all the negative reports and then you try to raise up a standard against the enemy. Well, that's knowing yourself and not knowing the enemy. The enemy makes a presentation. He makes the offer. He makes the suggestion. You know, women, you're, you're, you're feeling over your body and you feel a lump that shouldn't be there. And then he says, well, that's cancer. That's the presentation. And then the lump begins to form pain. And then you go to the doctor. And then the doctor says, well, I see a mass and I don't know what it is, so we're going to take an x-ray. Then you take an x-ray. And, and then the x-ray shows that it could be cancer. Then they take the blood sample. Then it shows that, see, this is all the evidence coming up against you. Then you're going to try to raise the stand against all the evidence. With all the preponderance of evidence that is coming against you, now you're going to try and raise the standard. I... I, I, my, my son, who's a, who's a world-class athlete, he said to me, Dad, if I stay ready, I ain't got to get ready. You can't go and do a thousand push-ups two minutes before your fight. You got to stay in shape. You got to be ready for when the devil comes. And like a flood, the spirit of the Lord can lift up a standard against him. Stay in the face of God. Stay in the presence of God. Stay in the will of God. Allow the word of God to be present in your life. Allow the presence of the Lord to work through every fiber of your being. Recognize the person of the Holy Spirit. And in doing so, you will be able to find that when the enemy comes, in like a flood, you can lift up a standard against him. So when he comes against your life with the spirit of delay, you can come against him with the word of the Lord. Well, you've been listening to Apostle Howard Langford with Spirit and Truth, Covenant Assembly, and we are so honored and blessed that you have tuned in tonight. Tune in again on tomorrow night as we desire to turn your heart toward hope. You can catch us, um, you can catch the rebroadcast on these uh, of these messages on YouTube, Spirit and Truth, Covenant Assembly, YouTube, and you can also catch it on our Facebook page, Spirit and Truth Covenant Assembly. Catch us Sundays um, from 1 to 2 on 92.5, this same station, 92.5, from 1 to 2 p.m. for the Sunday afternoon stretch with Apostle Howard Langford and Apostle Michelle Langford. And we, we ask that you consider uh, blessing this ministry by going to our website and making a donation. This ministry is listener-supported by going to www.onespiritandtruth.org. That's the number one spelled out, spiritandtruth.org. When you go there, you'll see <clears throat> our logo. You see our pictures. 
And we're going to be adding our itinerary, where we're going to be, and some different conferences that we're going to be having pretty soon. You can also order the books, my wife's book, Obedience 101, through there. That is a book that is changing lives. It's changing lives. So again, bless, uh, we are blessed that you came in on tonight and joined in with us. Tune in tomorrow as we desire to turn your heart toward hope. God bless. Praise the Lord, the Lord that we serve an awesome God. He's a mighty God, an everlasting God. He's an eternal God. He's a loving God, a just God, a feeling, and a living God. But we love him most because he's our God and he cares for us. You're listening to the Nightly Spirit and Truth with Apostle Howard Langford. And we are so honored and blessed that you've tuned in on tonight. Hey, listen, we want you to join us um, <clears throat> for our Sunday morning services. On second Sunday, we'll be back in the building at the... Uh, 5655 um, Executive, I'm, I'm sorry, um, at the Holiday Inn Executive Center on uh, Greenwich Road in the city of Virginia Beach. And we're, we're looking forward to seeing you there. We begin at 8 o'clock in the morning. So second Sunday in the month of June, we'll be back in the building at um, 8 o'clock in the morning for an hour of prayer. <clears throat> then we go right into worship and then word. And then we're out of the building, you know, but we... We have, we have watched exponential growth, and we're looking for the Lord to continue to do more. You know, you've been you've been ear hustling with us now. Come on, you've been listening to us now for the last two years on the radio, and you call us, and many of you have made, some of you have made contributions to this ministry to make sure that this ministry continues on the air, because it's a totally listener-supported ministry. Um, so we are looking forward, we thank God for your donations, but we're looking forward to meeting you in person. We are a ministry that is that is destined to walk out the plan of God for our life. And we want to help connect you to the plan of God for your life, that you don't have to live your life in a place of state of stagnation. Let's pray. Father, we come to you tonight thanking you for your love and your grace, your tender mercy. For morning by morning, the mercies we see, and we thank you, God, for your love. We are praying now that as, as we sit here tonight, as we're driving home from work, as we are laying before you, Father, about to lay our head down to rest. We're praying now, Father, that, that you will let your glory fall because your name is called. Prove the doubters wrong. Lord, you're mighty and you're strong. Lord, fight this battle for me. Help my unbelief. Father, in the name of Jesus, we're praying. In the name of Jesus, we're praying. praying. In the name of Jesus, we're praying. And we thank you now, Father. Thank you, Lord. And amen. Amen. So many of us have been have been waiting and wondering and praying and believing God for a time that seems like it's just not going to come. And the longer we wait, it seems like the spirit of stagnation continues to remain. It's very persistent. One of the things I've learned is that with the enemy... His, one of his major weapons, along with stagnation, is, is he's very resilient. In other words, the Bible says that when Jesus went to the mountain and when he was went into the wilderness, I should say, the Spirit of the Lord led him into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And the devil came, it's recorded, he came three times. And each time the Lord responded with the word. And on the third time, the devil left, but it says for a season, meaning that the devil was going to come back because the devil has been studying humans since Adam and Eve fell. Now you have to recognize this, 
that if Eve and Adam, who did not know sin, could fall, what makes you think that you can defeat the devil without being connected to the power of God? There are so many areas of our life that have kept us in stagnation. Secret thoughts, secret um, beliefs, the mixture of faith and unbelief, the mixture of religion and relationship, the mixture, um, the wickedness, the intertwining, the the the, the in the involvement with some things that are in witchcraft, manipulation, and 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 using certain um, areas of wickedness to try and and get the will of God done. The Lord is saying, "I don't need the help of the devil to get my work done." Now, the devil does. The Lord does use the devil, but He uses the devil in the areas where, when we won't submit to God, He allows. The devil to he allows it. Why? Because we allow it. He allows the devil to take over, take us over in those areas. In other words, the Lord said that I will turn them over to themselves, to a reprobate mind. In so many places and spaces, we're seeing areas of the church in a place of reprobate. You know, we're we're seeing the rise of of, of pastors who have just left the pulpit. And when I say left the pulpit, I'm saying that that they no longer want a pastor. <clears throat> I'm going to tell you, the, the 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 calling of pastor and apostle and and prophet and evangelist and teacher, those are not things that you can just pick up and choose like you can in any occupation. These are callings on your life, and we're called to be in these places by the Lord Himself. This is not for any selfish gain. This is not for anything that we can obtain uh, through our own fleshly involvement, but it's it's a calling of the Lord on our life. And that calling on our life is to make sure that we get the will of God done in our life. And so when so when when we don't answer the calling of the Lord in our life and when we give up on the calling of the Lord in our life because of oppression, because of because of of situations in our life that happen that that, that make us feel a certain way. They were not recognizing the relentless power that the devil has. Where he comes in our life to, as it says in Daniel chapter 7, 25, to wear down the saints. The devil uses the spirit of delay and distraction and discouragement to destroy the vision of God for your life. The word of God says, I would that you prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Let me give you an example. You know that eating those pig feet and drinking those sodas are bad for you. But you do it, why? Because there is no evidence that it's going to hurt me today. I was sharing with my sons the other day. As I, you know, I have a, a very large vegan um, appetite. In other words, I may eat meat maybe once a week and some chicken or fish maybe once a week, but if that, but mostly it's vegan. And I said to him, you know, I said, what you have to realize is this with your body, your body will tell on you later. The things you put in your body now will tell on you later. So um, in some cases of diabetes and, and heart failure and congestive heart failure, in some cases, not all cases, this is because of the things that we've done to our body and abuse for the years. Because the Bible, I mean, the body has a memory in it and it's coded to remember the things that we place in our body, but it begins also to tear down the the, the natural um, responses that our body is supposed to have to food. So it can no longer break down certain things in our body because we have abused it. That's where the enemy is. He's relentless and he has a memory. And he recognizes um, how we respond. And you might be strong today, but tomorrow you might not be strong. The Bible says that the enemy goes around. He orbits. He does it without rest. Why? Because he can't get rest. Seeking whom he may devour. So, Let's say you and your wife get into an argument and you go to work 
and this fine honey drop just walk by and give you that smile and pop that that body in a way that makes you look and now you're distracted. And she gives you that that mannerism as if, you know, I, I'll, I'll go out with you. And I'll just, I'm putting that loosely. And you're thinking now, well, I'm willing to compromise my vows for this woman or this man. But then you say, nah, it's not worth it. And then a month later, you're getting your, your wife getting an argument again. And another person comes by and they got everything that you will look for. You know, the songwriter said big legs, you know, uh, <laughs> all of that, you know. Um, and you're like, uh, it's not worth it. But you're still thinking about it. But now they're in your mind. A year later, you know, you and your wife are on better terms, but, but you're still not quite happy with your relationship. And so now it's this person that you see every day on your job, this woman on your, on your job every single day. And, and, and she's flirting with you. She may be your subordinate. She may be someone that works for you. She may be your secretary or something of that nature. And she's always sitting out, sending out signals that, that, that she'll spend some time with you. And you're spending a lot of quiet time alone with this person. And one day your hand caresses her hand and she doesn't respond by pulling her hand away. But but she allows her hand to stay there. And, and then you feel her hand a little while. And next thing you know, you're holding hands. Next thing you know, you're kissing. Next thing you know, you're doing some other things. When you give the enemy space in your heart and in your life, I promise you, he going to bring some friends. You know, there were times in our marriage where our marriage was, in, was, in, was, was very difficult. You know, my wife confessed to me later on. She said, you know, I, I was not as open to you because I was expecting you to be like everybody else. And, and, and because you weren't like everybody else, and then that took some years, some years of, of, of being faithful to my wife. It took years. I mean, years. When I say years, I mean like 20 years of being faithful to my wife. And, and I'm going to tell you, I didn't make it easy for her to, because uh, I'm not making my wife to be a bad person, because she's, I, mean, I adore this woman, I'm not, but I didn't make it easy for her because I made some bad choices with, with finances, I made some bad choices in staying on some jobs too long or staying in one church too long, and, and so I didn't make it easy for her, but I was just really, to be honest, it was just life. I was ill-prepared for some of the situations that I had in my life, and, and she was ill-prepared too because we got married very young. Now, with that being said, after 20 years of enduring each other and being faithful to each other, I have the wife that I only dreamed about. That's 32 years of being faithful to each other and faithful to the Lord. That's many years of being faithful. I'm saying that to say this right here. The devil has a plan for your life. And that plan is to pull you away from who God wants you to be. And, and he has a memory in the, and that plan is to keep you in a place of stagnation to destroy the purpose and the plan of God for your life. The spirit of stagnation is a force of retardation and makes the past of a person to be better than the present. This force of retardation creates stagnancy, wasted effort, and delay in the accomplishments of an assignment, of life's assignment. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 6, it says, Now I, Paul, beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of God, who is the presence and based among you, but being absent and bold toward you. But I beseech you that I may not be bold, that I am present <clears throat> with the confidence wherein, wherewith, I, wherewith I think to be bold against them. Then what, I'm, I'm going to break it down. What Paul is saying is this. I'm writing to you in boldness. And you know, I don't want you to think I'm writing to you in boldness because of because when I was with you, I wasn't out as bold. I walked in humility. I ain't scared. In other words, Paul is saying, but I'm writing to you in boldness because of the levels of, of 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 from the word that I'm hearing and the report that I'm receiving about where you are. I have to write in boldness at this point. It's but Paul says, for for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. In other words, Paul is saying, I, I could come to you with my boldness in my flesh, but I won't. 
Because the weapons of our warfare, they are not corner, but they are mighty through God. In other words, Paul said, I'm not going to use the authority on earth that I have, but I'm going to come to you. And if you come wrong, I got some weapons of my warfare that are not corner, but they are mighty through God. I'm going to tell you something, people, people of God. When you come against the devil, you cannot come against the devil with your, with your natural tendencies, but you've got to come against him with the power of God. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Again, when we're talking about the woman that will come on your job or the man that will come on your job or the, or the areas that, that the devil is laying down traps, he's using spiritual warfare against you. He's using wickedness. People in your life that are dealing in witchcraft and they place some things over your life for the last two or three generations ago and you're still wondering why you're in the same place as witchcraft. You've got to come against that and cry out against, cry out against, cry out against that in the spirit right now. And in doing so, the Lord promises. He promises to hear your cry. Now, I want to read this verse to you. It says, casting down imagination of every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ and having a readiness to, to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled, the enemy is coming after your obedience. Again, my wife's book, Obedience 101, you've got to find that book on our website and you've got to get it. That is a book that chronicles my wife's life through the last couple of years when the Lord just gave her a personal visitation. And in that, and through that personal visitation, the Lord encouraged her to write this book about obedience. Obedience is truly better than sacrifice. Sometimes you're finding yourself in the same place for years because you're not walking in obedience to the Lord. But when you walk in obedience to the Lord, it places you in, in the position of, 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 of receiving the blessing of God because the Lord's hand is on your life. Well, this has been Apostle Howard Langford sharing with you for the Nightly Spirit and Truth. Join us again tomorrow night as we desire to turn your heart toward hope. Listen to the announcements. God bless.